When you hear the phrase Old English Charm, the images you're probably thinking of are the Cotswolds. The Cotswolds is a designated area of outstanding natural beauty, which is similar to a national park. It stretches for over 800 square miles and is dotted with picturesque little villages that haven't changed in centuries. It's just a short two-hour drive from London, and because public transit isn't widespread in this area, a car is really the best way to explore. After picking up our rental car, we made the three-hour journey from Chelmsford across the country to the Cotswolds. Our plan was to spend two days and two nights exploring some of the little villages and hiking trails near where we were staying. First off, we literally just got out of the car. I've been walking for three minutes, and as you can see, hopefully it's tailing. So I've changed to take Instagram photos, and now we're gonna try to figure out what to do next. So after being in the car for three plus hours, we finally got to our first destination in the Cotswolds. It's called Borton Burton on the water. It's super super pretty, but as soon as we got out of the car, we walked for about two minutes and it started to rain. So we kind of had to take shelter and bundle up. We did get an umbrella and it did seem to stop raining. So hopefully we can stay dry and get some footage for you. slaughter and as you can see it's beautiful and sunny and that last clip was only taken an hour ago when it was pouring rain so I have no idea what's going on with the weather today but it's nice out so we're gonna walk from lower all the way to upper slaughter so the slaughters are one of the most kind of like picturesque areas of the Cotswolds every list that I looked at when I was researching basically said you have to come here and you can really see why like this place is absolutely gorgeous the buildings don't look like they've changed in at least 500 years um, so it's really pretty. We're really looking forward to this walk, which should take about half an hour to get up to Upper Slaughter. So we're walking through this footpath to get from the two slaughters, and we keep hearing sheep, which is exciting, and we found the sheep, but look at this. So in order to continue on our path, we have to cross through the sheep. Hey buddy. Hi guys. How are you guys doing? So we did pull ourselves away from the sheep and we've made our way up to Upper Slaughter now. So we just walked up the hill here to the kind of the church. This is one of the wool churches they call them. So basically all the wealthy wool merchants back in the day, basically how they flexed was that they built a church in their town. So that's how this church was built. It's uh, pretty neat, it's kind of a lot of old graveyard, gravestones around. So a little bit creepy as well, but uh, yeah, kind of cool spot. So we're just gonna check out the rest of the town and then head back to Lower Slaughter and check into our accommodation.
All right, so it's a little after five o'clock, guys. It's starting to rain again, but we have officially checked in at our accommodation. We are staying at Campton Yurts, which is just outside the town of Chipping Campton. There are two yurts on the property, Daisy and Buttercup. We are staying in Daisy, which is just up there. We'll give you a quick tour here in a sec. All right, guys, so we were gonna show you around the whole site, but uh, it's really started to come down here again. So we figured we'll just give you a tour of the yurt for tonight, and then tomorrow we'll show you the rest of the site. So kind of start over here. We've got like a little wood stove uh, for keeping us warm, which is great because it's already kind of chilly and I expect it'll get a little colder tonight. We've got one of the futons here. This yurt is actually extremely spacious. It can sleep up to six people. So you can have uh, a couple people on this futon and then there's another one on the other side of the yurt. And then we've got the main bedroom or bed, I guess this is one big bedroom, right? So uh, yeah, main bed looks pretty spacious. Looks like a king maybe um and then there's also these little fairy lights they're on, not on right now obviously because it's not uh, dark out yet but hopefully it'll look really pretty we'll try to get some video of that later when it gets dark um so yeah this is pretty much it but really nice really cozy so we're looking forward to staying here so we walked into town um and it's pretty quiet which is nice this is a super touristy area but obviously with covid there's no tourists um the plus side of that is that we get pretty much the whole city to ourselves the downside is that unfortunately that means a lot of restaurants aren't open right now we're still in lockdown um in the sense of you can eat but it has to be outside and it's freezing if you can't tell by how crazy i look so we did get food but we are eating outside and and cold when we do it, and there weren't a lot of options, unfortunately. So we had to come back in to get back to our yurt, and the sheep like all ran up to the gate, and now they're following us. They got really, really close. We'll include some photos or videos of that as well. But like, I don't know, it's kind of scary. All right, so we just got back to the yurt. Uh, we had a nice dinner uh, in town. Weather held out for us, thankfully. Uh, but it is really chilly so we're gonna try to light the wood stove here we got to walk back through the field and as you'll see in some of those clips there the sheep uh were following us around but we are covered now in sheep dung so uh yeah gonna stink a little bit in here tonight but that's okay all right we've got fire oh okay that actually goes pretty well so hopefully it should get nice and toasty in here soon and hopefully the fairy lights will also come on soon when it gets a little darker and it'll look nice and pretty in here day two here at Campton Yurts. Uh, as you can see, uh, so the farm that we're staying on has some free range chickens. This one decided to come over and say hi. So, uh, hello. Uh, we're gonna give you a tour of the rest of the site now. So we'll start over here. So this is the kitchen area here and it's kind of nice. Everything's kind of split into two. They even got it labeled. So like all the stuff for our yurt is in Daisy and then Buttercup for the other yurt. Uh, there's a couple of fridges here and a microwave and a toaster so it's got everything you pretty much need if you actually want to make your own food. So behind this lovely yellow door here is our bathroom and there's another bathroom right here so each year it has its own. So as you can see we've got a, a toilet, a shower, you know basically everything we need. So this is what the outside of our yurt looks like. It was actually pretty cozy last night once the wood stove got going it kept pretty warm uh, and so on top of the yurt itself we've got our own little picnic table over here and then we also have our own little fire pit over here so we got the fire pit here we're gonna hopefully try they have like these like grill attachments that you can put over the fire so we're gonna potentially try to make burgers tonight on that um so yeah you can see the other yurt in the background and they've got all the same stuff they also have a fenced area because um this property does allow dogs but just at that yurt so they can be kept in the fenced area all right so this is our babe of a car i am absolutely obsessed i don't know why i'm sitting on the driver's side because sean's the one that's been driving um, but she's an absolute beaut and as you can see she's purple which is really freaking cool and we've seen this color on a lot of other cars since we got here which is kind of interesting. So right now we're at the next village in the Cotswolds. It's called Broadway and if you're thinking of the Broadway in New York it's basically the exact opposite of that. So our first stop is going to be the Broadway Tower which is like the tallest point in all of the Cotswolds but we saw this beautiful view behind us so we just had to stop because it's absolutely breathtaking. 
All right, so we're just heading up to the tower. It's literally just over here, but there's literally just a whole field of deer behind us. I don't know if they're domesticated because I've never seen this many wild deer just like hanging out together, but kind of a cool experience. Guys, so we officially made it to Broadway Tower now. It's actually currently under renovation, so we can't actually go in and look around or anything like that, but I mean, it's just a, basically a giant tower in a field, so kind of cool. Apparently, we just saw somebody walk by and they said that we're supposed to touch the tower for good luck or something, so I guess we'll go find the spot to touch it and then we'll probably be on our way to Broadway. town of Broadway we did try to stop to get like a traditional afternoon tea with the tea and the snacks and all that but we were too early so we just got regular tea fortunately we couldn't film it just because it was so small and local and filled with people so now we're just kind of walking through the town and seeing what there is actual people's houses it's crazy to think that real people live in these and as you can see it's just picturesque of like what you would imagine a classic British village to look like all right we are now at Stowe on the Wold another one of the lovely little villages we were told to come to uh, we have stopped at the sheep on sheep street to get some lunch I've got classic fish and chips here and Alicia went for the pizza. So we just got back to the yurt from Stow on the Wool. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take much footage there just because it was mainly just shops and restaurants and stuff like that. Um, and we didn't want to film inside people's buildings. But we do want to show you the rest of the like campground here. So first up, we have this lovely guy. His name is Bob, and he's basically a pizza oven. You do have to buy dough from the people here if you want to use it, and it is a little bit expensive, so we decided not to, but it is really cool, and apparently it's really great. Over here is kind of like a hangout area. It's where people have been eating food, which is why we couldn't film it this morning, and there's a lot of seating. Um, obviously, we won't use that much, but it's nice to be if we need so this is the actual kitchen area. So there's two tubs, as Sean mentioned earlier, uh, one for each of us. It's really cool because they organized it really well. Everything that we need is gonna be on the right, which is great because as Canadians, we're all on the right of the road anyway, so kind of makes sense. And then there's an oven and all that stuff as well. Honestly, they've done a great job fully stocking it and we have not stressed about not having something. So we came down to Dover Hill. We were told by the lady who owns our accommodation that's amazing view and we had to check it out. And of course, that means we're now sitting in another field of sheep. Um, but we noticed that there's some like running in the background and playing what looks to be a game. They go up one hill, down, and then up the other. It's really interesting. sight up here for sure. After getting back from Dover's Hill we got a fire started for dinner. This took a little bit of time and probably an hour before the fire really got going to a point where we could actually cook. We got some burgers and zucchini on the grill and eventually they did cook although it took some time but they tasted pretty good afterwards. Overall this was an interesting experience although I don't know if I'd rush back to do it again. 
So we haven't showed you guys our year at night and it's really, really pretty. I just want to add that I'm in bed right now only because I'm freezing. I'm wearing my regular people clothes and then my pajamas on top and then still like my vest and stuff. So it's very cold in here. We've got the wood stove going. So we're hoping that once that gets fired up a little bit, it'll warm up. It did last night. So, but yeah, very chilly right now. Despite the cold, I wanted to take the opportunity to go out and photograph some of the stars. Coming from Toronto with so much light pollution, we never got to see the stars, so this was a great opportunity that I wasn't going to pass up. This was actually my first time doing any sort of astrophotography, but for a first go, I think they actually turned out pretty well. We're looking forward to more trips into the countryside in the future to keep practicing my astrophotography. All in all, this was an amazing little two-day break, and we were ready to head home the next day and get back for a warm shower and the comforts of home. welcome back to the car so we are back at the truck stop where we first got gas and food and stuff um, we did our checkout this morning and we just really quickly got everything together it was freezing freezing cold last night I literally slept in my vest and all of that but while we were at the truck stop we saw these cute little things so it's a hand warmer and it's a sheep so I figured it's the perfect souvenir because obviously I was freezing cold and obviously we saw a lot of sheep all right so we're finally home yeah we just dropped the car back off and uh we're very desperately in need of a shower if you can tell <laughs> feels nice to be home it was a great trip and we're so happy that we, you could come along with us and also i feel like we need to give a big shout out to anyone who follows us on tiktok because we received so many amazing suggestions on things to do in the Cotswolds from there yeah it was honestly such a nice change of pace and a nice kind of way to break up the stress of the move over the last couple months so we're hoping to do another road trip again in the future. I feel confident enough now driving on the left for us <laughs> to do another one down the line. Honestly, Sean, you did great. And again, thank you for joining us and make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks guys. Oh, we are all